gotta have an infection. And if the show goes on season two, we're assuming it is. <laughs> um, where would that journey go for him? Is he gonna be yanked out of purgatory classroom? It's a very good question. Honestly, I think for season two, we're going to explore a lot. We're going to talk to Mr. Uh, from his origins, who he was before the agent, you know, if he was married, if he had kids. I think we've explored so many of these characters you know, his background to Doc's background to Bobo Del Rey to Willa. We haven't really exposed who this, this, this person is, why he's here, and why he's reacting the way he is. Where do these serums he keeps popping in? And I think it's going to be even cool coming back to the jail where he's put half those criminals in and being thrown in with them and understanding what can happen after. That's like a, probably a whole, whole series in itself, you know? Dolls locked up, prison break, dolls edition, you know what I'm saying? That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> How um, do you know what dolls is? Or is it like a secret to you too? Honestly, I want it to be a unicorn. That's in my honest opinion. I think dolls being a unicorn would be the coolest thing on TV. But uh, we're still figuring it out. You know, and I think even if I knew, I still wouldn't tell you guys. But it's one of those things where like I have a hunch, but it'll be interesting. Somebody may mention that uh, he may be a mutant from X-Men. He's probably the original. Can you imagine? Dolls like from, you know, Professor X is like, you know, thing. And then he goes to Arkham. Exactly. Crossover. Hey, dolls on X-Men. Brian Singer. What did the big pivotal thing happen is, of course, the kids. I mean, between dolls and Winona. Yes. That was really hot. That was unexpected. Thank you. But again, even though he might be in prison, he could break out. I would imagine he'd still want to, you know, deal with those feelings. Yeah, I think so. I think even, you know, in that specific moment where they actually lip lock was kind of just wolf for him. It was a wolf, a wolf actor. And uh, even at the last moment in the series, where you see him driving off and that look that he has. There's so much going on in his head. and so much he's thinking about. And I think if we get into season two, we'll be able to tap into his brain. And that'll be a cool dynamic, understanding how they're going to work together with that connection. How they're going to do business with that intimate spark. And especially being, you know, why not be who she is and dolls being who he is. That's going to be, that's going to be messy. going to be real messy. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Is he willing to fight Doc for the woman? Is he willing to fight Doc for the woman? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I, 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 I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because the relationship between um, Doc and Winona is going to be interesting because they're going to be sort of Yes, yes, yes. I think it's what Tim and I, uh, Tim is amazing by the way. Um, he and I, we talked about a cool thing that we wanted to get a spin off. It's called the Doc and Dolls Show. Or riding in cars with Doc and Dolls. <laughs> how crazy would that be? You know, like just dolls teaching Doc how a car works. Like just 30 seconds. This is how the issue works. What? Comment, comment, cut. You know what I mean? Like an, an episode of me. Hey, how are you? I'm better now. Uh, if you could write the first scene of season two for your character, what would it look like? Doing chin-ups in a prison cell and fighting off a bunch of revenants and bad guys. <laughs> Bang! Hello! Shirt on though, because I gotta work out these burgers. <laughs> Doesn't he get like his one quality call at Winona and think bring that gun right down here right now? I don't now. think they give out. I don't think they follow the rules in the Black and Badge division. <laughs> I don't think they get phone calls and rights and all that. I think they're stripped of that stuff when you're in the Black Badge facility. But if he did, I think he would probably call my daughter. Maybe his mommy. We'll see. Are you, are you surprised at kind of the big fan following that the show's gotten? It's insane. Like the fandom in a good way. Yeah. I have been blown away. As soon as I got off the airplane at the San Diego International Airport, bombarded by like Urpers. I was like, what the heck? You know? It's like, what? Like, Meanwhile, you got Lucas Joe from MacGyver, who's like, oh, hey, how's it going? You know what I mean? It's interesting. But um, what's really cool is the gifts that we've been getting. And like, just knowing each and every one of us and what we like and the things that we, 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 we like. Tim, he got like dog stashes and all that stuff, you know. Melly loves coffee, she got coffee. And, and the Dom likes earthy things, she got earthy things. I DJ, so I got DJ stuff. Like, it's like, they really know who we are. And that's just so humbling and so refreshing and I, I'm so grateful for our incredible fans and supporters. It really means a lot. What do you think it is about the show? My oh, goodness, if I knew, I'd tell the executives right away, it'd be like season three, four, five, six, seven. But um, honestly, if I can guess, I I'm in it. So what the fans get from us 
you know, I, that's something that they can articulate better than I can. But I think what really works in our favor is the camaraderie we are, and the family that we have, and the love that we have for each other. I think that really shows, and it's not an act, I'm not trying to be funny and cool. I think we genuinely have such a great time, we joke around, we love each other, and I think the fans really relate to that. And also the diversity of the cast and the representation in every capacity from the relationships with Dominique. Cat and the way on, you know, myself. It's just it's an eclectic show, and I think it really has a, a reach to a lot of different audiences. And I think that's a really key in today's society and what's going on, and, um, and in today's television world. And I think that's a huge plus for us. So you don't think it's about the badass again? <laughs> oh, that's a given. And having a female lead, come on, you know, cast essentially. You know, Terminator's like, this is, a, this is an amazing team. Badass females, you know, and so Mel kills it. And I think that's super cool to see, you know, a woman in a role where she's not playing a damsel in distress. You know, it's real quality, real flaws. And I think that's awesome. You know, even for a guy watching that, I'm like, yes, finally, something different, you know? Do you ever get like, you know, a little like, I don't know, just a funny feeling because you're watching the women go out there and beat up other guys? I love it. <laughs> Need more of it. Are you kidding me? Funny feeling. I love that feeling. I'm like, please kick my ass any day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love it. Like, please. So I, I think it's dope. Need more of that. You know, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera from directors, producers. Thank God for our amazing writer, Emily Andres. But we need more of that. You know, and that's what the industry needs, and I think it'll make it so much better. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your burger. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs>